I was inspired by the artist Leonardo da Vinci and uh, his portfolio of anatomical drawings. The one that caught my eye the most was uh, the Vitruvian Man, as it was sort of a take on the perfect body. I played around with this idea by incorporating uh, disability, or deformity and abnormality into my artwork to directly contrast uh, his creation. My artworks are three snowboards um, that feature three iconic territory landscapes. The top one being Mindel Beach Markets, the second one being Kalu Kalu, also known as the Devil's Marbles, and the third one being the um, Kata Judah, also known as the Olgas. I chose to do them on snowboards because I love the irony in them, because we are a territory, territory landscapes with no snow, so obviously we can't really use them, but it was just kind of fun. I did Ray Lu, um, inspired by like a Gucci campaign and the theme of isolation, which is something that we all experienced this year. It's a set of canvases drawn on with like white pen. Um, it's inspired by like line art and a little bit of collage. It allowed me to like be able to distort the way I see people and the way I viewed the world this year. Everything we were doing kind of stopped for a little bit and I like was very alone, I felt very alone. Um, so I decided I'd channel some of my feelings into my artwork. I was inspired by an artwork by Gustav Courbet, The Desperate Man. I liked the balance of his painting, the way he had like the hands placed next to the face to show shock in the subject's face. And I wanted to recreate the same sort of vibe in my painting. I was also inspired by the, ba the ballet Capellia and a scene from my novel, which was my other major work for this year, because I felt like both of those would be cool to portray visually. I was inspired mainly by family, especially my dad. He, growing up, he always did dot dot paintings, so I was inspired to do dot dot paintings for my final. The picture represents my family, it represents my culture, my country, so that all inspired me. You know, my childhood growing up all inspired me to put it into one picture. The idea behind my artworks, Isolation, was basically just trying to explore my own mental health that I felt other people could relate to particularly trying to photograph not being able to be present in my own reality, um, not dealing with change properly and lacking a bit of childish needs of my own. My biggest inspiration is definitely Gregory Crudson. Despite being a technical artist, he's also very good at being narrative and emotive in his images. Persona is about me. It's about my struggle for my identity. It encompasses two sides um, that are opposing yet symbiotic. The first side is like the sun. It represents all the things that I can't change about myself. The left side is about the fluidity of my identity and how it's always changing uh, due to new experiences and memories. Saturday is my artwork about my dad and I in our garden in Sydney. It encompasses my love for plants and the environment and also highlights my relationship between my dad and I, which is very loving and very nurturing. In my artwork, um, I did a girl um, trying to get away from these monsters as I wanted to portray me in art class. I wanted to portray me trying to get away from all the assignments and stuff. I thought it was pretty funny doing it in a really scary way even though it's not even that scary. I went into acrylic with like a whole new mindset. I wanted to um, use shadows and more detail in the monsters compared to the girl as I wanted to like really feel really scared when you saw the monsters. Loss, I was actually really inspired by my dog. He got really sick and I was really worried about him. He nearly died so I wanted to show that in a way that people could relate in a more romantic and kind of messed up way about a dude dying and a girl having to lose him in seconds. That was kind of my inspiration. When I started this product, I knew I wanted to do something with makeup. I came up with my ideas by researching other photographers and makeup books. I was interested in how colour and facial expression can show emotion. 
My final product is a third lip crop for cream with bold lipstick that I added on Photoshop. I was just really inspired by the outdoors because growing up I always went camping with my, my dad and I felt a really strong connection with it and so when I was inspired to create my final film I just thought well what comes back to the roots of me and what means a lot to me. Summer of 20, that was a crazy one. So I really wanted to go all out with that and I bought my own camera, which is a Kodak 360 and I had a lot of fun with it. And it was mostly about Darwin youth culture and just the activities that millennials demonstrate like skateboarding, going to Maccas, jetty jumping, doing stupid things which a lot of us enjoy doing when we're young. My artwork is a textile piece. Like my inspiration kind of thing was mythical creatures but then I also wanted to add in culture to it so I decided to put the story of fairies that I've heard from different people like that Aboriginal fairies taking care of mob and then put it on art, used Alice Springs culture as an outsider into my work. With some things you can't have red in Alice, like cause that's kind of sacred colour. So then you have to be careful about what colours you use, if you're using ochres and whatnot, like you just have to kind of stay between your boundaries, you know, and not over cross them. Food Dominant is one of those long-term projects that I've been working on since the start of the year. And I thought to myself, what are my favourite childhood games which mean a lot to me? And I thought Super Mario Galaxy was the first thing that came to my head. And it was like the big bang went off in my mind and I was just bustling with ideas and inspiration. I'm really proud of the trailer because it was actually the first time I ever animated something completely from scratch. And I learnt a lot of new techniques with editing, storyboarding, even animation, which I didn't think I would be capable of. My children's story, Stuck at Home, was definitely influenced by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I noticed my little brother and other younger kids, they depend so much on electronics and the internet for their entertainment. So I wanted to re-expose children to inventive and creative thinking and making the best of a bad situation and that's just what Stuck at Home is really about. For this art piece I was inspired by a beautiful photo I had taken of my sister Meg earlier in the year at the Telegraph station. I really loved the way that the light stood behind her and reflected off her hair and turned her very dark hair into a beautiful white colour. It was just a really good picture in terms of like a really natural smile, her position, it wasn't posed at all, she was just really in the moment enjoying herself. I had definitely heard the statement, oh that's such feminist BS a couple of times from people around me and I've even heard it directed at me before I even started these pieces and it was just something I heard all the time so I decided that instead of letting it get me down or instead of letting it just continue to frustrate me I would turn it into the meaning of my piece and have it as like my own little backwards way of getting like payback I guess. <laughs> yeah it's definitely open to individual interpretation. I don't want anyone to ever look at anything I create and just think they have to see it the way I've made it. So Faces is three separate f sec it's one film and it's got three separate sections and depending on the order and the number of number of sections viewed changes the audience's perception of one central protagonist and depending on the context the audience gains from each section changes how they might perceive her. In the Heat of the Night Fall into a Dream is about a the conflict I felt between uh, sort of the natural world that I live quite close to, you know, at Casuarina Beach and stuff, compared to the more mechanised worlds of school and work. So it was sort of an attempt, a more abstract attempt to depict that and the sort of cognitive dissonance I felt like living between these two worlds. It was very self-guided. You got to learn a lot about yourself. But it was also really challenging. It was so stressful. Very stressful. It was rough. 
So I had my first meltdown in the first six weeks. I ended up using every single day of the holidays working, but I don't regret it at all. I think it was good because it was new for me and it was pushing me, challenging me. It was difficult at first, but it all came together. Lots of ups and downs, lots of crying. Big workloads get done in a short amount of time. I had the best teacher to help me get through it. By the end, I think my end products I was pretty happy with and it sort of made all that effort worth it. Work to deadlines, like work to get your things done. If it doesn't go the way that you hoped or if something didn't look the way that you wanted to, it's okay. Just try again, keep going because it will develop further. So pick what you want to do, express yourself. And when you're feeling inspired, get as much done as you can. And if you have creative block, you just have to get past it. Do do other parts of your work. To not give up when you make little mistake and to just keep going. If you don't procrastinate, you sit down and you work on it, it's actually not that hard to get through. I feel like starting off early is really good. I didn't and that's why I got really stressed out. Remain flexible. Definitely be prepared, know what you're getting yourself into. Just have fun with it and enjoy it while it lasts. Like, it's not every day you can do that kind of thing. Get out of your comfort zone. Do something unique and be creative. At the end of the day, it's your passion, it's your work. Nobody can see into your mind and see what you're trying to achieve. Only you know that. At times it'll seem like it's all too much, but you just have to kind of just keep on going. If you really love it, just do it. Because even though it was really tough for me, it was something I really enjoyed working hard on. And put 110% effort into everything you do because you'll be so proud of it by the end. And don't procrastinate. That's a good one.